What's up everyone? In this video, we're going to go over data fields in Payload CMS. Before we get started, don't forget to hit subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Now, let's dive in. Out of the box, Payload CMS comes with a lot of different types of fields you can use to build out your collections and globals. In this video, we will start to go over three groups of fields that I've unofficially called the main fields, layout fields, and relationship fields. This doesn't cover every field available to you in Payload CMS, but it should get you started since configuration options are similar across all fields. We will also not cover the rich text field in this video. Instead, I will cover that in a future video so we can make time to discuss it in depth. We also will not cover all the configuration options for the fields as we go. Since most fields include the same types of config options, I will cover that in a separate video. So let's dive in with the main fields. My grouping of these fields is not official by any means, but it helps me to think about these fields in different categories. The main fields are the data fields that most people will use day to day when building out their Payload CMS project. Payload CMS calls all of these fields data fields, meaning they store data in the database. A few of the fields we'll cover later, like the upload and relationship fields, are not included in this video even though they are data fields. These types of fields require more time and detail to explain than the following fields. The fields we'll go over in this video include the text, email, number, select, checkbox, and date fields. The text field is your standard HTML text form field. We created a couple in the last video when we made our basic collections like so. This field saves your content as a string and only requires the name of the field and the type option in order to initialize the field. And that's exactly what we did in the last video. For the text field, you can use three admin options. So if we go type in admin and look at our options, we have placeholder, which we can say as a string, this is a test placeholder. And what this will do is when we go to create a new blog, when we hit create new, we'll see this is a test placeholder. Placeholder allows you to fill in a value in the text input as a placeholder. This won't save as this is a test placeholder. If I were to hit save, it would just be an empty string in the collection. Autocomplete will allow you to tell the browser to either enable or disable autocomplete. In setting RTL, allows you to set how the text is displayed from left to right to right to left. So if I set RTL to true, the text will now show up from right to left instead of from left to right as default. So we'll just leave the placeholder for now and we'll move on. Another handy feature for the text field is the read only admin option. While we'll go over this in more detail later, this can be helpful if you want to create a field that can't be edited. For example, if you wanted to create a URL field that was built from the slug and the website domain, you could set up a hook that put all that together and wrote it to a text field that has read only enabled. This field doesn't need to be edited by a user and can be taken care of by payload. So we can enable read only by just adding read only to the admin configuration there and add, putting it as true. So now I'm not able to click into this placeholder text, but we want to be able to edit this field. So I will also remove read only. The email field is the standard HTML email form field. Only the type and name options are required for this field. So if I come down here and add a new field with name email and type email, that's all we need to configure this email field. This field can be used to enforce that the value input here is in the format of a valid email address. This field saves the value as a string. So if we come over here, now we should see email pop up. And if I type in my email address, this would be accepted because if I save it, it's a valid email address. And though it disappeared on the front end, it is still there. But if I were to do this, it is not in the form of a valid email address, so this won't work. Similar to the text field, you can use a couple of admin fields. You can't use RTL here, but you can use placeholder to define a placeholder string in the field and autocomplete to tell the browser to enable or disable autocomplete for this field. So we'll just add our admin placeholder and we'll say enter an email address. So now if we come over here, and we get rid of this, we'll see that placeholder text is there. 
it may also be valuable to use the configuration option called unique here. If you have a collection of users where each user should have their own unique email address, you can set unique to true. And when you do that, it'll enforce that no copies of email addresses may be used. The number field is the standard HTML number form field. Only the type and name options are required for this field. So if we add a new field, we'll say name is number. And let's clean this up a little bit. And we'll say type is also number. That's all we need. So if I save this, we see number pop up here. This field saves the content as a number and validates that the value inputted is indeed a number. So I can't type in A, the keyboard will not allow me to do it, but I can type in as many numbers as I'd like. And I can also increase or decrease the value using the operating buttons right there. This field uses the placeholder and autocomplete field admin config options, just like text and email, but it introduces a new property called step. Step allows us to set a default increment or decrement value using the browser's up and down arrows that we were just messing with. So if we do admin and then we add step and we'll just say 1000, which needs to be a number, let it refresh. And if I hit up, it'll increment by thousands and decrement by thousands. The select field allows you to include a drop down style interactive feature in your collection or global. Name and type are required, so we're going to add a new field here by doing name select with a type of select. And here, this is still not going to work because these fields are not the only required fields. Name and type are required, just like the other fields, but select field introduces a new required field called options. So if I type in options, we will see it go away when I add the array, which is what it is looking for here. Now this can be an array of strings, so I will show you that. I'll just do string one and string two, and since it auto-completed to string three, I'll include that. And we'll see that we have string one, two, and three. Now if you'd like to have a little bit more control, you can pass it in an array of objects. So we're going to separate these out, and we can type in, make that into an object, and we can do label, which we'll do string one, and then value, which we will do as string one. Make sure these are separated by a comma, and we'll just copy and paste those a couple of times. Make sure we don't delete our array completely, and then just change these to two, and these to three. And now when we save this, we'll see here that we have a select dropdown with the labels being string one, two, and three. And this is case sensitive, so if I change string one, you can see that it is now lowercase string one. Now this is how I prefer to do it. It just adds a little bit more flexibility in how you target and use this data on the front end. If you want to be able to select more than one option in your select field, you can do that by setting the has many option to enable this feature. So I can just add has many, set it to true, save that. And now I can come here and select as many as I'd like. You're not able to use placeholder or autocomplete features for this field, but you have the option to be able to sort and clear the select field. Here we can see that the clear option is already enabled, so that is default. But if we want to disable the ability to clear, or if we don't want this to be sortable, which it is right now, so I can click and drag these in any order I want, we can disable those by going to admin and then is clearable set to false is sortable can also set that to false so now that x will go away and i can set these i can clear them individually but i can't clear them all and i'm no longer able to click and drag them into a different order so we are able to use is clearable when has many is not true so if we set is clearable to true we're able to then clear this field even though there is not multiple fields there. So we'll leave it how it is there and go over the next field which is checkbox, which just like everything else, we will include a name, call it checkbox, and a type, also called checkbox. This comes in handy when you want to conditionally render something on the front end when the field is checked, that is when it's set to true. You can also use this to conditionally render fields on the back end within Payload CMS, which we will go over in a future video. Like other fields, just like we did here, name and type are required options for this field, 
but there are no admin configuration options specific to the checkbox field. You're still able to use some higher level admin configuration options like description. So we'll add that and do admin and we'll do description. This is a checkbox. And when I save that, we'll see our checkbox pop up with the admin description of this is a checkbox. The last field we'll go over is the date field, which stores a date in your database. Beyond that, it provides your admin panel with a customizable time picker interface. This allows you to have a graphical view of the date and time you want to use. So we know that name and type are going to be required. So we're going to add a new field, which we'll say name of date, type of date. So we can see here that we have a calendar, but we're not able to pick the time. So we can pick whatever date we want, but no time is available. If we wanted to enable that, which you most likely would want to if you're trying to set up something where you can schedule, you're going to use admin, date, and then picker appearance. And then here you can choose the default day only, day and time, month only, and time only. So we're gonna select day and time, and now we can see the time slots after we close and reopen. So now, if you wanted to change this from 30 minute time slots to 15 minutes, we could set time intervals to 15 and it changes this to 15 minute time intervals. There are so many other admin options available to you for the date field, including a placeholder and the option to customize the date field appearance. And we'll go into more detail about those options in a future video. And that's it for what Payload's main fields are. If you have any questions or suggestions on topics you want me to cover, drop those in the comments. These fields are the basic building blocks of Payload CMS collections and globals. It's not an exhaustive list, but it will get you started with the most commonly used fields. Each field has a lot of flexibility and customization that we didn't cover, but we will cover all of that in upcoming videos. To make sure you see those videos, be sure to subscribe and like this content. Make sure you also get notifications so you never miss a video. See you next time.